The IDF are pushing full steam ahead in Gaza just this morning, capturing a major Hamas stronghold in West Jabalia, just north of Gaza City. We're going to get into those details, along with a breaking report that photographers working for CNN, the Associated Press, and Reuters probably knew about the October massacre ahead of time and did not warn anyone. I'm Ben, and this is The Israel Guys. Israeli troops raising an Israeli flag on a beach in Gaza, probably for the first time since 2005 when Israel withdrew all Israelis from the Gaza Strip and handed the reins of power over to the Palestinians who then proceeded to elect Hamas. Also, this next video is extremely powerful. <laughs> an IDF unit playing this message over loudspeakers for hostages, Israeli hostages captured by Hamas. They said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And then they threw in their own message at the end. We, the people of Israel, are not afraid of you, Palestinians. We are strong. I wish, I wish the military would, for every neighborhood that they have to sweep through, for every neighborhood that they expel Hamas from, that they would take this message and put it in the minarets, with the minarets, the mosques that normally pray, call to prayer uh, for Palestinians. I wish that they would switch out the tape recorders and put this message in, not only for the hostages that are captured by Hamas right now, to be able to hear the message of encouragement for, for God and for the Israeli people, but also so that Hamas and the Palestinians that stand on the side of evil would know that there is a God in Israel that neither slumbers nor sleeps. Welcome back to the Israel Guys, where we believe in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda. You should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Guys, don't forget, if you enjoy the content that we put out here on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. You can also join our breaking news group on Telegram. The link is down in the description below. And if you want to get involved in what is going on in Israel, join Operation Itai. Link is also in the description below. We're Christian Zionists airlifting emergency supplies to the local farms and communities in Judea and Samaria who desperately need equipment in these perilous times. There's an article from... The Times of Israel about this newest offensive from the IDF. The Israeli Defense Forces force said its troops captured a major Hamas stronghold in West Jabalia, just north of Gaza, in the early hours of Thursday morning, following 10 hours of fighting, as the military meanwhile pushes further into the heart of Gaza City, where the terror group is believed to have its underground headquarters. Um, this particular operation was carried out by the nine. 33rd Nahal Infantry Brigade, Infantry Brigade um, and it was a stronghold, stronghold called Outpost 17. Apparently, they had up above ground defenses and also below ground defenses as well, and the fighting was really fierce. Um, they said as part of the operation, they uncovered significant Hamas battle plans, which is good, also significant caches of weapons and um, tunnel shafts as well. Uh, some of the tunnel shafts were local. Some of them opened up to vast other networks as well. One of them, they said, was right next to a kindergarten. Um, and, and this entrance in particular led to a lot bigger tunnel network, uh, which we don't have a lot of details on that for obvious reasons. Um, but it led to a much bigger tunnel network, and it was stashed right directly next to um, a kindergarten. Um 
They also took out a, a, a senior Hamas commander who was responsible for Hamas's anti-tank guided missile operations in southern Israel. They also uncovered a drone manufacturing plant and weapons depot inside of a residential building that apparently looked like it had a family in it directly next to a school. You can see the guys entering the building here and, and searching through the, the weapons stored. Um, we're talking about all the materials needed to build these these drones. A lot of these are kamikaze drones, uh, where the, when they 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 dive in and, and destroy whatever they hit, they're you know laden with explosives. And they're showing how all of this is right next to a child's bedroom that look like looks you know looks like it had children in it somewhat recently. And it's a really good reminder that this is not incidental. This is actual Hamas policy that we've seen over and over and over again. Hamas puts their military installations next to or on top of civilian or underneath civilian installations all the time. This is what they do because it's extremely effective in hiding them from Israeli airstrikes. Um, case in, <laughs> our, our good point on that in specific, if Israel indiscriminately bombed civilian locations and did not care about the lives of civilians, then Hamas would not be doing this. There'd be no reason for them to do this. The only reason they do it is because it is effective, because Israel cares about the lives of civilians. There was an interrogation that Israel just released with one of the Hamas fighters captured down south, one of the evil, barbaric, animalistic Hamas fighters that was captured down south. And uh, as part of this interrogation, he flat out admitted that right here. مين بيستعملها؟ بيستعملها في ممرضين غادوا يعني مدني 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 الناس اه الناس صحيح ويوم ما يفوت الجيش الاسرائيلي شو بيسووا؟ لا اظن بس اسلاك يعني كيف؟ اذا ما اذا ما انفجر بالضغط او بالحراره بتفجر ايد يعني بالليل. So he's talking about booby traps that they made for soldiers coming in. And he flat out admits, no, no qualms about it, that they ran the detonation wires into an active clinic. If you, if you go watch the whole video, he explains it in a lot more detail, into an active medical clinic, into a mosque and active medical clinic where civilians are coming and going all day long. Where there's lots of doctors, like this is just a full on civilian area. And they ran the detonation wires into there so that they could hide out and detonate them when Israeli tanks would come by if the automated systems didn't work. Why? Because they know it's effective. Also, you can see the IDF, what the IDF is up against with the tunnels, uh, with this video right here. You can see one of the openings to these tunnels in what you can see looks like another residential building that's been um, destroyed. <laughs> Also, here's some more footage put out by uh, the IDF of the 252nd Division conducting conducting ground operations in Gaza, securing the area of Beit Hanun, um, and they're eliminating a lot of terrorists. They're taking over the, the, the Hamas tunnels um, and also destroying a lot of other Hamas, actual Hamas uh, infrastructure. And then in this video here, you can see um, in a little bit more detail what they're dealing with with these tunnels. The IDF is saying so far they've destroyed 130 entrances to Hamas tunnels. This is just the beginning. There are, I think, thousands more. These tunnel networks are extremely broad. 
and it, it's going to take a lot of work for the IDF to sort through all of these tunnels. Uh, but they're full on. They're full engaged in, in this work and, and making a lot of progress every single day. Sadly, um, there was another soldier killed today. Master Sergeant Eliyahu Benjamin um, Elmakes, Elmakes, who is 29 years old and was from Jerusalem. This brings the death toll, the military death toll, up to 34 since I believe the invasion of Gaza and 352 since October 7th. Mind you, this is just the, the military death toll, civilian death toll in Israel from the original massacre is much, much higher than that. 304,901. That's how many words there are in the Bible. But what if I told you that by just knowing 75 core Hebrew words, you could start adding some new meaning to the way you understand the Bible. Embark on a transformative journey with 75 Hebrew words you need to know to understand the Bible. Discover the profound wisdom of the scriptures like never before. This beautifully crafted coffee table sized book reveals some of the essence of the Hebrew Bible, explaining the meanings of 75 pivotal Hebrew words. With each word comes a deep dive essay, connections to related terms, and information accessible only through the original language. Experience the scriptures in their purest form with translation, translated and transliterated verses in full biblical context. Perfect for gifting, discussion, and personal reflection, this book is not just a read, it's an experience that has the potential to transform your Bible study. Secure your copy today and deepen your connection to God and the scriptures. Visit the link below to order 75 Hebrew words today. This article comes from JNS. Israeli officials reacted with anger to reports suggesting that photographers associated with international news services may have had advanced knowledge of Hamas's plan to attack Israeli communities on October 7th. They were reacting to a report by Honest Reporting, a Jerusalem-based media watchdog which identified six freelance photographers from the Gaza Strip who were present during the attacks and whose work the Associated Press and Reuters were selling to other publications. Honest Reporting identified the photographers as Hassan uh, Eslaya, Yosef Massoud, Ali Mahmoud, Hatem Ali Muhammad Fayek, Abu Mustafa, and Yasser Kudi. Uh, what were they doing so early on what would ordinarily have been a quiet Saturday morning? Was it coordinated with Hamas? Did the respectable wire services which published their photos, approve of their presence inside enemy territory, together with the terrorist infiltrators, did the photojournalists who freelance for other media like CNN and the New York Times notify those outlets? Honest reporting asked those questions. This is a fascinating report worth digging into a lot more. I'm going to put the link down in the description below. Uh, but basically, we had photographers working for CNN, Associated Press, and Reuters who crossed into Israel with the Hamas fighters uh, for the operation. And, 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 and um, honest reporting is kind of asking some rhetorical questions here, but then they knew, like they knew what they knew what they were doing. This was not, they did not happen to be there early in the morning. There's there's no way. We have way too many photos and videos to prove otherwise. Uh, these guys came through with the commandos from Hamas. And uh, uh, we have a video here of of the guy from uh, that works for CNN um, coming through on a motorcycle, holding a hand grenade in his hand, taking photos and holding a hand grenade in his hand. And then here he is with some photos scrubbed from his Twitter account that he he scrubbed, um, and thankfully some people had some screenshots of and honest reporting shared of him taking a selfie with a burning Israeli tank. Um, Here's a photo of him from before, posing with Hamas leader and mastermind of the October 7th massacre, uh, Yah, 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 I'm not sure how you pronounce that, scene more. Um, there's photos of him taken by him storming Israeli communities. Yeah, so, um, and to remind you, these guys' photos are still being bought and used by all the major news organizations. You can go to the stories about the war, about the October 7th massacre, and look at the photo credits. Look at the, look at the credits underneath, and you'll see these guys' names all over the place. 
is this standard journalistic pra- practice? Is this standard practice to um, be connected with one of the world's worst terrorist groups, with one of the most barbaric terrorist groups that has ever existed, to have contacts that call you the night before and say, hey, we're going to go commit a massacre and kill as many people as we possibly can. We're going to... Um, kidnap, we're going to rape, we're going to torture, we're going to kill babies, we're going to cut off people's heads. Come, come, come with us. Come join in. Bring your camera. Uh, Here's a hand grenade. Uh, A follow-up. This is not standard journalistic practice. Um, And the question remains, how much, if any, responsibility do uh, any of these media networks hold for this? I mean, in theory, these guys were just probably subcontracting or whatever, and they didn't know anything about it. But still, they're still to this day, as far as I can tell, buying the rights to use these photos from these guys and using them on their website. Um, Obviously, these organizations have disavowed ties or cut ties with these freelancers, but still is is a crazy, crazy story and one that um, for sure bids looking into more with more investigative reporting. If you want to learn more, read that article from um, JNS or or the original one from Honest Reporting. Uh, government officials inside of Israel have said that these guys, these um, photographers, will be added to the terrorist list of the terrorists that committed these atrocities. There will be no separation. Uh, the evidence is there that these guys were responsible along with the actual Hamas fighters were just as responsible for being a part of this and will be added to the Sheen Bet elimination list uh, for these terrorists inside of Gaza if and should they be caught. Guys, Israel's in a fight for survival. Please join us in doing everything we can to stand with her. Go to operationetai.com or click the link below. Don't forget to subscribe and get the conversation going down below. As always, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back every day, Monday through Friday, with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Israel.